Hello everyone. So I'm here with uh, Marcelo Antunes uh, from Brazil, and uh, I asked Marcelo to uh, come to this podcast, to the Medical Device Make Easy podcast, to help us understand how a standard is created. So Marcelo, how are you? Hi Maria, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Talking about standards. Great. So uh, Marcelo, I think you are in Brazil. Is it that? That's correct. I'm in São Paulo. So great. So I think three hours ahead or four hours ahead now from me. So I well, think it's the beginning uh, of the afternoon. A, yeah, we had a change in our uh, in our summertime system. So it's four hours right now. Okay, great. So Marcelo, um, as I said, I want you maybe to help us to understand uh, how to create a standard. But before that, if you can maybe introduce yourself exactly and tell us who you are, what you are doing, and uh, so that people really understand better um, yeah, from which background you have. Sure. Yeah, I work uh, for more or less 10 years now as a consultant. I have my consultant practice, which is SQR consultant in Brazil. And, and I've been having factory manufacturers uh, comply with regulations in general and standards in particular as ways to uh, fulfill the regulatory requirements. We have a very strong focus on risk management and all related uh, processes, including as part of medical device development. And well, we basically we help manufacturers develop their device, develop their quality systems, and then uh, apply, submit the regulations worldwide. And we also work with the post market uh, things, re requirements the manufacturer have to fulfill after if they put that into the market. Okay, so let's start now by um, explaining to people how to create a, a standard. Um, because, yeah, a standard is not something that um, just appears from a government or anything. So, and uh, Marcelo will really uh, work us through that. Uh, so one of the standard organization that uh, is really famous is um, is the, an, an international standard is the ISO I think. So uh, what is it exactly? Is it um, a private company? Is it a public company? Is it a government? What, what is it exactly? It's a private company in principle. However, it's uh, well, it has international rights. They they, have, they are part of different uh, agreements. But uh, the main point is we, we have in fact three international standards bodies with ISO, IEC, and I don't I don't remember the not name of the other one, but it, it works with telecom things. So mostly of the standards, international standards we have right now are are from ISO. IEC has electrotechnical standards. And this other one has telecom standards. The rest of the standards are in ISO. Okay, great. And um, so when we are talking about ISO, so there is like um, a CEO um, members, and how is it structured exactly? This thing. Okay. And that, 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 that's a good question because that's that's important to understand. Uh, to understand how the standards are developing. Uh, ISO has a structure, uh, let's say our organization is structure, they have a president, they have secretaries and whatever. And from the standards creation standpoint, they have members and the members are countries. Okay. So if you go to the ISO website, you'll notice that if you go in any, there are several committees, they have some 300, a little less than that committees right now. Each committee focuses on a specific topic. For example, okay. we okay. have one non-committee from our side that I mentioned even to you, STC 210, which works with quality systems and general aspects of medical devices, right? So this committee only works with that. And who are the members of the, this committee? Countries. So okay. and in, in, yeah, in practice, they are the, the we, we call standards development organizations SDOs, right, okay. from okay. standards developed organizations. And <laughs> the standard developed organizations of each country are the members of ISO, from mainly the country itself is the member. And uh, we have, uh, so each country can provide a member to represent in a, in a committee. So we, if they exactly. want, they can, if they, it's not mandatory to have a member, it's if, only if they want, I think. Exactly, and, and that's how things happen. Each country, it basically gains two things by being a member. 
Yeah, you have to pay. The country has to pay it for the ISO to be in the member. So there's a, 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 a deal of financing ISO. That how that's how they financial. But what mainly the countries get by being uh, members of technical committees, they have they are responsible for uh, voting in the documents. So they have they have to participate in the discussions and any document that is circulated. Uh, we call the national committees in this case, for example, the Brazilian National Committee is ABNT. When we are saying also members, uh, we are also talking about company. So some companies uh, can provide, mem I mean, can can be member of those committees. I think. No, the members usually are people. Well, they they usually yeah. represent the company, but formally exactly. they are. There for the company, but the role is that an expert member appointed by a country, they are not really there for the country itself. They are they are there for their expertise. Okay, yeah. So, so it's mainly yeah. So a, a, a company can provide a member there, but it's not they are not there for the company. They are there as experts of this area. So to to help uh, to help to uh, to build a standard because they have this expertise. If I can say, yeah. good. O obviously, they will try. They may try. To uh, to do things that would be good for the company because the yeah. company is in there, but formally they are there for their expertise. Okay, good. Uh, so how uh, then uh, this ISO group or because there is ISO, but uh, there is also other groups. So how is it working? So mainly, how, how are the processes working for for that? Yeah. The pro the process is clearly defined in uh, do two documents that we call the ISO IC correct. IC directives. Uh, the first one details how the work is done, so it details how standards are created and how okay. technical okay. committees work, how, well, for example, how you have to have a chair, how you have to have a secretary, what they have to do, what members are expected to do, how meetings work and things like that, including the flow chart on how standards are developed. The second document, with, which is the Directives Part 2, details uh, how to draft standards. So they have the rules on how to create a document itself, how do they have to have a reference, they have to have introduction and things like that, how they should verb should be written and things like that. So they, they, they are styling rules for how to write the documents. Okay. Those two general documents, and, and uh, uh, if you look at the ISO directives from the ISO side, they have an addendum that there are rules, so some rules specific to ISO, and the IC have some rules specific to IC, but the same. Uh, they deal. They, they they really detail how work. The only problem that these documents uh, that, that it's not very good to read because if you're not participating, they might just seem like crazy things. They just detail the the specific requirements that have to be followed, the specific process. So with, if you just look at that, uh, they are really. It's you only know that if you were part of the of the discussion. But there okay. is an expectation that all, all the experts know them at least in some way. Okay, so uh, just regarding the the this uh, this work, so do you have a leader for this this work? So is there some somebody that is like uh, because I, I, if 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 you can say we have a lot of members in one room and trying to decide, maybe at the end there would be no decision or I don't know how it's working. But is there somebody that is kind of here to really uh, make facilitating the the group, facilitating the discussion, so it can move really on, on the right direction? The committee has different working groups, and the groups are basically ad hoc groups because they do not have power to decide, right? Okay. Uh, they perform the work. These working groups, they have what we call conveners, which are the, the coordinators of the groups. And this convener is mainly the leader of the work. He has uh, responsibilities on getting the work done, including conflicting and things like that. I think one thing that's important to understand that the standards, including international standards, they are created on a consensus basis, right? Okay. So they, they need to reach consensus between participants. Okay, so um, it means that maybe every um, um, there is maybe some countries that are, don't agree with this standard, but they have to find a, a middle point or a way to, to make it happen, if I can say. Yeah. 
There is no kind of veto. There is no kind of uh, like uh, in the union uh, in the um, yeah uh, in, in the governments where we say oh I have a veto so I, if I say no it's no and uh, we cannot move forward. No, it's it's not part of the process. The process has to create the, the standard. They have to be a consensus process. Otherwise, it's not a standard. Uh, uh, something that people agree with. Okay, so um, now. Um, how how is it exactly do you do you have kind of, of a steps how is it developed so uh, mainly where we are starting first what we are doing second what is exactly the, the different step i mean what my idea is more um is there a kind of uh, a situation that we can see from behind the curtain so mainly seeing exactly what's happening some maybe anecdotes i don't know if you have some anecdotes of some committees that you are you are participating and something that we can maybe also see Tell people that yeah, it's maybe not always easy, or it's there is some situations that happens also. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of things that happen. Although although we have, uh, in general, how do we work? There is a in a definition. There is a proposal for a new standard. The proposal is sent for the uh, technical committees, and they vote if they want to begin the work or not. Right? Okay. There's a lot of formal of forms that have to be filled. In particular, the, the newer cutting proposal form, it has it, it details what is the need for the standard, if there are regulations or worldwide they use the standard, if there's a problem with patents and things like that. So it's really something that uh, details why we would be creating such a document. This okay. document is circulated, are voted, and if it's voted okay, the, the work begins, it goes through. The, so there's a, there's a flow chart to that, okay. right? Really, we really do in practice is to have meetings, physical meetings, usually of working groups to discuss the technical specifics. So okay. there's a real good background uh, work being done to enable the development process, but most of the development itself is done through uh, meetings. So uh, because um, I, if I remember, I had um, I I was. I, I was already sometime part of those uh, those discussions, but it was mainly uh, through the platform. There is also a platform where people can can directly vote or give comments or this or that. But uh, beside this platform, there is really uh, the meetings where people are going and participating. Are those meetings kind of mandatory for members, or it's really voluntary? How is it working? It's all voluntary, in fact. They are not required to be part of the meetings, but and that's why sometimes we have a, a group which has, for example, 100 members, but only 20 members keep going to discussions, which is the more active members. All of them get the information, but more or less uh, uh, 12 or 30 members do participate more fully in that. Okay, and um, when you are traveling like that uh, to those uh, meetings, to those committees, so... Um, is it something that is, um, uh, are the expenses, if I can say, for going there like personal or it's paid by ISO? How, how is it also working for that? So always paid by the, the participants. Okay. Yes. The idea is that uh, the participant, uh, uh, who can participate in, for stand, in standards, when, uh, whoever wants, but whoever really has also the resources to participate. So even big manufacturers to have resources for that and they understand the strategic need of being there. But the others, they may not have the chance to do that, mainly because they don't have resources for that. But the, the, the participation online has been becoming bigger, even participating remotely in physical meetings. So it's a way to participate. It's a very okay. good way to participate. Good. So now we have the new work um, item proposal. It's accepted. So what is the next step then? Next step is the, well, if a, a working group has, there's no working group yet, you have to create a working group. Okay. Uh, part, part of the new work item proposal, in fact, you, if you have to say if you are willing, if the country is willing to participate, and if they are willing to indicate the experts, at okay. least to vote. So if there's no working group, a new working group is created, basically. If not, okay. the work is, is done through our working group. And usually the leader is already mentioned on the new recutting proposal. You have to mention who will be leading the project. So this is allocated to a working group usually, right? Okay. This working group, they begin writing what is called the working draft. So it's a draft only for the working group. 
and the group built consensus on this document uh, until a consensus is established. They, this may involve uh, working online. This may involve several meetings. There's one document that we are working that has already been four or five fix, uh, fixed, uh, sorry, physical meetings two years only for the work and so it really depends on how the work is done it depends on if there's already some initial document provided by uh, uh, the proposal and the, the proposal can, can can be from anywhere it can be from countries for example it's the national committees can propose it. sometimes it's, in the past it was more easier that some countries have specific standards that they wanted to be international. They just proposed they stand there be international. So we began creation of document with initial text. Sometimes okay. there's nothing like that, so we have to create from scratch. It takes more time. So and that's uh, what what's done. There. It's uh, uh, the working draft is creating until the consensus is enough to circulate this document to the national committees for review. So uh, do you have kind of uh... Um, so, in terms of timing, so how long is, um, in average, how long we can have this, this working group working to make this draft um, happen and everything? So, is there kind of a minimum time or it can take two years, three years or four years or what's, what's exactly the... Good, good, good question because the neurocutting proposal also has to detail how long will it take to, to create a standard. The usual time frame is 36 months. Okay. Right. Until publication, so you get three years is a very good bet. But there is a fast track for 24 months right now, which is not, it's used for some kind of documents, and a, lo a longer track for 48 months. So okay. this has to be detailed before the proposal. The proposal goes with that, right? So the, 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 the national committees vote on the proposal, and then we have to go into the, that time frame. Uh, have you already seen a standard that is more than 36 months and that or past oh, the due common. date? It's very common, in fact. Okay. So it, means really, that we, it, really, it really depends on the votes, right? So because it, uh, the 36 months is just a, 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 a planning tool, but it depends on votes going okay. If votes are against the, the, the drafts, they will take more time. Okay. But so, uh, there are... The problem is that is that we is that, that there is that we have to the committee has to sorry the working group has to ask the committee for an extension. The okay. committee have to agree with that, and and the technical management board with the ISO overview judge has to uh, agree with that. Okay, so it's really uh, yeah, it's really regulated. But, if you can say we, you, you, it's not just a. Uh, yeah, it's not just a SQL, oh, let's just expand that. You have to have a very a, a lot of focus before you can do that. Okay. Sometimes and even it's the case that you have to, depend on the votes, you simply have to finish the project and begin working on the standard again for okay. three or four years. Okay. Uh, so uh, do you know, of, yeah, I mean, as, as we said, for all the expense and everything, it's paid by the, the members themselves. But all this organization of ISO is paid by, by whom exactly? So ISO, as you said, is a company. So how ISO is making money to pay all these things? Selling standards. Ah, so really it's only by selling all the standards, then they can all pay all that. Okay, great. So it's not like paid by subvention from other organizations. It's really standard that is really paying all this mechanism. What they usually, what they are usual way of getting the money is through selling standards. They have, they, they sell some more things than, than standards, like books and some some types of other deliverables, but mainly is by selling standards. Okay, that's good. Um, so now we have the working draft. I hope after thirty six months or a bit more, we get the, everything. So now it has to go to the committee. After one, one year only, after two at the. After 12 months, it's the usual time for the working draft. Okay. Because you know, we have to feed the working draft as part of the process. So we'll have the working draft first. Okay. So it's really, uh, when we say the timing of 36 months, for example, it's really for the whole process. But inside this process, we have the working draft. Application of the standard. Yeah, okay. So uh, okay. Uh, this is what I misunderstood. Okay. Okay. So 12 months, for example, for the working draft, then we have to go to the committee. This is the first document that is circulated to all the member committees, right? And they can comment on the document. They do not vote yet. 
Okay. So this okay. is really to show the consensus that was uh, agreed by the working group and to verify if this consensus is also uh, consensus by the, the, the national committees. Most of the time there's a lot of comments. You can you usually can have documents with one, no, no, 100 pages of comments, right? So after that, when we get back to the comment, the, the comment has a period also. Is three months is the usual time to three or four months is the usual time for those comments. So after this period, the national committees and just just to make it clear, that's why I think it's different. The experts may be part. The experts for the working group may be part or not of the national committee. Uh, the the working the national committees they send their comments and then usually. A new uh, a new physical meeting is uh, scheduled for the working group to answer these comments. So what we do is okay. to basically get those comments one by one and verify if they are okay. And if okay, we accept them and change the standard basically on the comment. Okay. So um, and this is a committee that has to approve all this. Not not for this part, in fact, because well, well, it, it goes through the, the committee, but the thing this works is really done uh, after the working draft is circulated. We have to circulate through the committees, uh, national committees, but then it goes back. Well, they're the secretary of the TC, the technical committee. It usually handles all that and just create a big Excel uh, okay. document with other comments from other countries. Okay, good. Um, so what's then? Um, you, it goes back to the working group, I think, and then what's what's yeah. the next step then? It goes back to the working group, and we the, the governor usually send the the comments for a preview, right? Mm -hmm. And the, we usually also schedule another physical meeting. Okay, there are a lot so, of physical meetings. <laughs> yeah. These would be the meetings. Uh, well, most of the time, the works of the fifth to ten in particular, they're, they're, they, they are very uh, important for medical device in general because they are generic standards. So yeah. usually they have lots and lots and lots of comments. And okay. that's why we need, we need physical meetings to discuss them. Okay, that's great. Um, so then uh, we have all that. Um, so at this stage, so, is it still public or is it private or uh, nobody? So it, it's all private, yeah. It's or, or, or still private, so not communicated to outside and nobody really knows what is exactly uh, discussed People during those, those things. That's what is happening. For example, I usually put information on when things are, but not a document. The document is, is, is really inside also, all, all, only for the, the working group and the national committees that receive them. Okay. Oh, it's right. a it's a although it's a consensus, it's a closed thing because the consensus is built between the experts and the participants of the national committees. Okay, um, and then we have the draft, the final draft, or what's oh, what's uh, the stage? Yeah, DIS. Yeah, the DIS. After the, 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 the committed draft, we have the DIS with the draft international standard. We deal with the comments, so we change the standard to tackle the comments, right? And then we send another document, which is called the DIS. Uh, and this document is for comment and for vote. Okay. So there's a rule that, well, basically 66% uh, of the national committees have to go to, go to agree and not more than 25% have to not agree. And this is the rule that we have. So. Uh, it circulated for comment and vote. The national committees again they comment on the document, but in this case they vote if they agree with the document or not. Okay, and it's uh, it's uh, as I say, uh, it's, is it exactly the same people that already created that that have to vote on that? Is it's it's still the same group? If I can say it's not like external groups. The national committees may be different people. There are some countries in which the expert is different. So okay. it's not exactly, most of the time they are participating. For example, in Brazil, I am the expert, but I also chair the group. So it's, it's mostly it's me, in fact, and people that participate with me in, okay. in the groups I chair in Brazil. But there are countries that the, the guys that participate as working of the standards are not part of the national committee. So there's totally different people. And they can be 
uh, have uh, some comments to something that they they were not part of if i can say they can start to yeah. also i mean a lot of other people that were not on part of all the discussion can start now to provide new comments exactly. or maybe comments that were already provided before and corrected or i mean it can still be taking time also and in fact the dis is the last time you can make if it goes, uh, if it is agreed upon, it's the last time you can have technical changes. Okay. The FBIS, okay. the next step, you can't have te technical changes, only a tutorial ones. Okay. So now let's say that um, everything is fine. The comments are okay. We reviewed everything. So do we have a, a standard now, or is there no. another step? You have to go to the the F, the final draft yet. Okay. okay right so now. Uh, due to the rules changes and the directives two years ago, the final draft is optional. If the, the DIS has enough votes and not much comments, they can pass directly to publication. Okay. But the usual way is after the DIS is uh, comments and votes are received, we revise the document again and goes to an FD. So we circulate the revised documents as a final draft. Finally, okay. you can have real changes, and you have to either vote against the whole document or agree with the whole document. Your negative vote can only be for the document itself, not to technical specifics. Okay, so yeah, we are we are now um, yeah having uh, passed through all the different groups, committees, um, checkpoints, if I can say. At the end, everybody agrees. Then we can go to a final, uh, final, final. Uh, how we call it? Final draft or have final, uh, final. So, you know, the name is, is FDAS, which is Final Draft International Standard. Okay, so FDAS, uh, and as soon as you have that, the ISO group can start, uh, can officially say yes. We can. We are publishing now the new version, the, the new version of the standards or uh, revision of the standards. Is that? Yeah. This may take some time, but yeah, after the FDIS is voted, usually two or three months after the standard is published. So let's let's take an example. For example, uh, the ISO 13485. We had the, the new version 2016, uh, so it was published in 2016 uh, with the transition period of three years uh, to be implemented. Is just, it just to carry that? This is another discussion. Uh, there's uh, although the transition period for standards, uh, ISO standards have been suggesting that. Uh, really, this is only a general suggestion because it really depends okay. on, on the way the standard is used. For example, the regulation calls that the regulation has to define the real transition period. We okay. are putting those, those transition periods because some people began uh, asking what the experts thought about the time for transition, but really, and it's important to understand, uh, we as an ISO group, uh, we, we, can, we, we cannot do anything about how standards are being used. We create them only. Okay, so, um, okay, so it's created. Um, you recommend then this transition period, if I can say it's recommendation. But uh, what about, um, because what I know is that, for example, we have uh, the, uh, the third party organization like notified bodies that are accredited uh, for giving you the certification, for example, for ISO. Is there a step on, on this process where we are saying that now we can accredit those notified bodies for this new standard or this new version, or is it not the job of ISO at all, these things? It's not the job of ISO. Uh, for example, let's let's get a, a usual way. There's a, certi a, cert a certification bodies. They work with thirty-five certification. Follow a certification scheme, right? Such as the IAF, IAF, sorry, uh, and they follow the rules of the certification scheme. The certification scheme that details the rules for accreditations, transitions, and things like that. It's not ISO. Okay, so but ISO is uh, as soon as ISO is providing this new standard, this new revision of the standard, this IAF, if I can say, has to take that into account for the accreditation yeah. of their of their new notify of their certification organization, if I can say. Exactly. 
Okay. But under, under their rules, that, that, that's what I'm saying. There's no rule from ISO that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, they have to define that by themselves. It's not like uh, an ISO rule. It's really that uh, this, this organization that have to uh, regulate that and really update their certification bodies, uh, bodies yeah. for that. Um, Which case, for example, was, let's say, a harmonized standard in Europe. There's a harmonization process that has to be followed. It's not an ISO anything. And then Created, there's a transition timeline There is decided by the by the, the harmonization process uh, when manufacturers can claim the presumption of conformity of the standard. So it has nothing to do with ISO. It deals with the application of the standard by, in this case, a regulation. So mainly ISO is creating all the standards and anyone that wants to use it, they use it. If it's not like them who is... Uh, with deciding that for, for the regulation for people, for legislation, if I can say, they say, here are the standards. If you want to use it as an harmonized standard, it's your choice, but it's not us who is defining that. Yeah. Well, obviously, the, the participants, they try to be, there's some rules, some expectations from ISO that uh, you create standards to be used. So we try to make standards as... Uh, to be prepared, be prepared as possible to be used as uh, standards yeah. in the world. So okay. uh, the participants also know that. But the thing is, the itself has no authority on the use of the standard. They only have authority on the creation and maintaining of the standard. Okay. And in terms of maintaining the standard, so as, as I said, we have, uh, for example, the successive version of ISO 13485. Um, how, yeah, is there a, a, a rule for a revision of a standard? Is it something that is systematic or how is it working? It's in fact called a systematic review. And after each standard is finalized, the working group has to define the systematic review period. The usual period is five years. So basically five years for publication, though a little earlier because we have to vote on that. Uh, four years and a half or something between publication and national committees are have to be asked by a technical committee. Uh, what do you do with the standard? Okay. And most of the, the, there's in fact six answers, but mostly we have three answers, which is we keep it, we re revise it, we throw it. Okay. And this Sounds rule, good. this rule is created to maintain standards up to date. That's the, the whole idea. Okay. And. Yeah, particularly in the case that you mentioned, 1345, we did a little different because of a lot of pressures and different stuff. We make a three-year uh, systematic review. So this year, it will go into systematic review. Okay. So yeah, because uh, as I said, uh, we had the, the recommendation for a transition of three years. And as soon as we are starting to really implement, I mean, implement it, uh, finalize, if I can say the transition, then we start to think again about the, about this. So it's also the group that has to uh, say yes or no. I mean, they can also say, no, we don't do any change. It's, uh, we keep it the same and it's not a problem or it's a mandatory to make some changes. Not the group, no, not the working group. It's the national committee. They, are vo they vote for that. Okay, and they can vote um, to change it, they can vote to keep it, or they can vote to uh, withdraw it, if I can say. Yeah, I have to abstain because I don't have experts and things like that. But the, the, the three important ones are uh, maintain it, approve it as it is, keep it as it is, uh, revise it or amend it, depending on are basically the same thing. You have a you have a number of amendments that you can create. So you either create an amendment or revise it. It depends on some uh, questions. Or okay. withdraw it. So now that um, people are really, really uh, knowledgeable about how to create a standard, if they want to participate to it, how they should do? As we said, so countries are, are defining some experts to do that. So how they can say, I am an expert and I want to participate to this standard, or uh, how is the process for that? The process is that you have to go through your national committee. Okay. Usually, okay. usually national countries have what we call mirror groups. For example, okay. in Brazil, we have a mirror group to TC210. And this group is the group when, when, when uh, TC210 sends documentation to national countries, as I mentioned, they, they, they go to the SDO. In case of Brazil, they go to a BNT. 
right? Which is our SDO. Uh, Being thief, uh, forward this document to us because we we act as Brazil in practice in the name of ABNT. And this group is the group that can appoint experts that re receive the documents, that vote for the documents. So usually you have to go through the mirror group in your country. Okay. And yeah. you have to provide kind of a, a CV or something, or you just say, I want to be an expert and I, I'm, 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 I can be accepted, or how is it working? Well, usually, we usually participating on the national group is open, not all okay. the time. The real thing is most of the countries that are not the US or Europe, they do not have, do not have a tradition, or, or Japan or whatever, uh, they do not have, have a tradition of standards development. So really, uh, keep as an example, in this, in this mirror group, this mirror group was created in IBNT because I asked for it. There was no mirror group, I just asked for it, and I was elected chairman and got a secretary, and people began participating, only because I wanted that. Okay. This is what happens in a lot of the countries that don't have these participations. In other countries, they have established for years now mirror groups. They may have specific rules. For example, in the US, the, the, the mirror groups, they're called the TAG tech groups. They are... Uh, they are uh, managed by AME. The, the, the rules really depends on each country. Most of them won't have no specific rules, but generally it's a consensus discussion. And again, uh, usually participation on the national level is open. Okay, good. Uh, do you know, for example, if there is a lot of people that are um, yeah, trying to access. Uh, is, is there? Is it crowded? If I can say, or people, uh, or the ISO is is lacking of members, so they are really uh, trying to get more members. This depends on the on the works on the works on TC210 again, because it's they TC210 is one of the few uh, medical device committees. We have some of non ISO, some on IC. There is really general. So we talk about quality management in general, risk management in general, usability in general. So it usually focuses on all devices. So there's a lot of interest in, in a lot of participation. Uh, groups, for example, usually lack participation because there's not too much people in the world that know a lot of some of the, the products. So yeah, It, they can be overwhelmed in some groups, and there can be a lot of lack of participation in other groups. Okay, so it's really something that uh, yeah, people have to to um, voluntarily go and, and accept to to do this work, uh, so that uh, that they can help because it's really helping to make it uh, to make a standard which is helping to harmonize also uh, in the in the world uh, to also help um, companies. Because they are um, they are looking for some standards to help them to go in the right direction to justify that what they are doing is good. So I think yeah, it's um, it's really important that we have more members or more people going and, and trying to to work on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so well, 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 one well, just one comment, one anecdote that I usually say is the first time I went to a meeting, I went to a meeting in uh, New Zealand. Yeah. And after the worst flight in my life, the first flight international in my life, which was really bad, I just yeah. came come there to New Zealand, which really is a good country, but it's a very, very distant country, right? For uh, two week meetings of the IC62 Commission. And I noticed there was, I don't know, six people from Philips there. Okay. And just thinking, why are people, well, why, uh, Big manufacturers, usually they have big money, but they don't have money to spend on things they don't want, right? So why would Philips people participate in standards work, which I still say I think it's things for geeks, if you think about it, it's for okay. nerds, right? Why why people, Philips, pay for six people to spend two weeks there in New Zealand at the end of the world? Well, because this is strategic for them. So yeah. they have to participate either to know or to drive the standards which also will, in practice, drive regulation and things like that. Exactly. And I think this strategic participation is probably what people don't understand and don't uh, think about it when they think about standards development. Because uh, what I know is that also sometimes people are complaining on some standards, saying why this standard is do doing like this or doing like that. But 
um, if they are not participating to this creation, so it's it's normal if I can say they, they didn't make their voice um, um, heard. So it's why uh, the, the standard is going in one direction. But if they want really a standard going in, in, in direction, they want, they have to participate, they have to, I, I would not say it's fight, but as you said, it's really a consensus to really- It's really uh, very calm on that. Sorry. Yeah. Just Sorry. No, I'm just saying that you say you mentioned that it's really common that we see people just say, oh, but this standard is wrong or something. It's not whatever. But yeah, but why when we were you when we are developing it? Yeah, it's, exactly. it's easy to say that after things are after five years of development, but yeah, you need people to go there and discuss it. Exactly. That's great. Okay, so I think uh, we know now all the secrets of the creation of uh, standards. Um, we encourage people really to go and to participate to those uh, to those uh, standard creation because it's really important for all the industry and uh, and as it's ISO, it's also a kind of an international uh, topic. Um, just one thing that um, I want to uh, to talk about with you because uh, I met you the first time uh, on a forum called Elsmar. Uh, Cove Forum. So I just wanted to to give also the opportunity maybe to talk about this this forum, which is uh, for me really excellent. I think it's a, a forum where we have a lot of a lot of discussion. Forums are not something that are hype now. If I can say it's not a trend uh, now with all those uh, social media, but this one is really interesting for all the medical device. Um, medical device um, discussions, not only medical devices, it's really a forum for all kinds of standards because when I'm, I'm, I'm visiting a bit of the other groups, it's really uh, with aeronautics, uh, with all kinds of industries, but we have a big group developed about medical devices. So can you talk about that? Because I think you are the moderator for these groups. Yeah, yeah I am mostly moderate, uh, I focus on moderating the medical device part, but we have a lot of different technical discussions. Well, the Elmer Cove is uh, probably the oldest forum on the internet for technical discussions. It's been up since 1996, so a lot of time. Uh, and the idea really is to, uh, uh, the motto is people helping people. The idea is really to share experience and share knowledge, and it has been done for the last 20 years a lot. So uh, the forum is, there are several sub-forums, the medical device sub-forums is right now one of the busiest one, but there's is really 10% of the forums, the medical device, if you think about it. Uh, they, they ha we have a group of moderators that tightly moderate the forum, so it's not an open, and that, that, that's, I think, part of the problem that we have with social media today. Social media, really, it's not focused on the discussions, at least not on discussion on the technical level that we have. And that's yeah, part of yeah. the problem. We can go on LinkedIn and just discuss things. It goes up and you have a lot of people make marketing and things like that. We ban everything in the Elsmer Forum. We just keep the discussion. And okay. it, we have to, well, the, the moderators are really what makes the forum go and just keep everything, this, the discussion under control so people can enjoy it. No, it's really great. As I said, I'm, I'm really participating to this forum. I, I, I really like to go there just to read what are the questions and try maybe to answer also those questions. But it also gives me also some inspiration of some articles that I'm creating on Easy Medical Device and say, oh, there is a lot of people asking this question. Uh, the answers looks really great. So maybe there is a lot of other people that looks for that. So let's make an article about this. So it's also something that is really, really inspiring. But I really encourage a lot of people to go to this forum. So I will also put the, the, the link on the show notes uh, to... Uh, make this also um, working to also make it this um, the, uh, to also bring all your questions if I can say because as soon as you are asking your question there is a lot of people that are coming and really trying to help uh, giving their their opinions their experience also I saw a lot of people asking question about audits how to behave in that case um, for example one question was uh, my quality manager just left the company and I have an audit in one week what should I do <laughs> so it <laughs> it was for me like uh, okay great I mean we can give give a lot of, of support for for people so I really encourage them to, to really come and, and also participate to it, if I can say. Yeah. Good. Uh, so, Marcelo, so now um, I think we are finished with, um, with, the, with the podcast. So is there something else that we are missing or something that you want to maybe say to people? Yeah, I'm just saying something about, about me. In fact, I, I have changed one forum that I have into a, a news website. Is also feed on LinkedIn and the Osmer Co, which is called the Medical Device 
a medical device dot expert website. Okay. I'm Good. just calling it medical device expert news. The idea is that we can get information, up to date information on regulation standards, including we obviously cannot say a lot of things on the open, but general information is okay. So my idea is to keep, to keep having information, even videos. I just put on one video from our meeting that we had in Brazil three weeks ago from Direct Work Group One in risk management. So the idea is to get more this more general information for people to be knowledge about. Uh, and this is one of the way you can find you can find me. Uh, you can also find me in LinkedIn because I just put that these things in LinkedIn automatically. You can go to our, our, our website. We are just revising our website. But mainly the thing is, uh, and also because of the Elsmer Cove and things like that, we are always open to discussion. We just love discussions, trying to help people as much as you can. No, oh, great. Uh, as I said, I will also put those uh, links uh, on on the show notes for people. Uh, yeah, I also I also look at your at your blog where you are big, providing information. It's really great because it's also updates, uh, regulatory updates that people are looking for. And uh, if you are not following each of the websites uh, that are providing those updates, you are a bit lost. So having a point where we can really go and find all those information is also uh, is also a great a great tool. So I will also put that uh, put that on the show notes. Uh, and yeah, as you said, you they can also find you in Else Markov forum. So if they want yeah. to ask you a question, and then you can you can answer to them. So it's, I think it will be also great. Okay, and so if you have any 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 comments on the standards development and how to do that, how to participate, I'm also open to that. There were some cases in the past that I just helped some people from different countries establish their mirror working groups. Because it's the, the the problem is if you don't go into these things, they can be a little complex and tricky. So you probably yeah. have to have some uh, explaining the way to do that and trying to find it in your country. So it's also you can go just contact me. Okay, great. So yeah, I think uh, going to an experienced person who already went through all this is <laughs> is easier than trying to make it uh, by yourself. So it's great. Okay, Marcelo. So thank you very much. I think it's really a, a great podcast, and I hope uh, yeah people will um, will really participate now to the standards, as I hope you know now how, how it's working, and also participate in the forum, so S Marco forum, and uh, yeah, and uh, we will meet them there and try to answer all their questions. So okay, Marcelo, thank you very much, and uh, then I wish you a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.